I'm Sarah. And I'm Courtney. And this is Bodice Tipplers. Uh, we're going to read the kind of books we used to steal from Mom's nightstands, and we're going to drink about it. So, uh, today we're going to talk about Pride of the Peacock by Victoria Holt, and we're going to be drinking uh, Wolf Glass's Yellow Label Chardonnay, uh, which I got at Morgan Alley's because they didn't have any wines with a peacock on the label, which is kind of crazy because basic bitches love peacocks and they love wine. So I don't know what was going on with that, but the nice guy at Morgan Alley's told me this is his favorite inexpensive Australian wine, which goes with the setting of the book, um, and so we're going to see if that's any good. Morganelli's, where rich people and poor people both buy booze and then don't make eye contact. Morganelli's. I half-assed mine and went to Aldi's, where, you know, half-assing is queen, <laughs> and bought Tail Slide. I got the name because it had tail, and, you know, peacock <laughs> tail. And also, the bottle, which is a surfboard, was blue, and I was like, oh, it's kind of peacockish. It's California. Basically, it's the furthest thing from this book that a wine could be. But, you know, it's wine and... It's going to be good. So we haven't tried that one yet. Um, the Wolf Blast, which I figured was a romance novel dude name, um, we we did try that, and I think it's pretty good. It's got a little oaky. It's it is a little oaky, and I do like Wolf Blast. I mean, it all sounds, sounds like a sexual act that somebody's going to do to a girl in a book. <laughs> like, I'm going to Wolf Blast her. So I, I like that. I like that kind of element to it. <laughs> well, thumbs up on uh, the the Morganelli's reputation. Uh, the recommendation yes, of Wolf Blast. Wolf Blast. That's all right. I would get that again. Ten ninety nine. Not too bad. All right. So Pride of the Peacock. We're going to start with the book summary, and I have the official book summary here. A gothic tale about Jessica Clavering, whose unique inheritance compels her to marry an opal mining executive, whom she dislikes. In Australia, she encounters a mystery surrounding a rare opal and discovers her growing love for her husband. That's the official. And we also have the book covers. And that's one of the things we're going to try to do is look at both the old and new book covers. And honestly, I kind of like the old book cover a little bit better. I mean, it's not salacious at all. Like, <laughs> Unfortunately. You know, it's a girl and a hat, and there's a guy, and there's a horse, and there's a peacock feather. I mean, we're really taking the literalness <laughs> of it right there. But it's better than the new one. The new one looks like one of those Christian romance novel covers. They're all the same. All the Victoria Holt novels that they have reissued have, like, the, a very themed cover, so you can't tell anything about the book from it. And it's very static, and they all have, like, a third of a girl's face on the yeah. top. It just And she's always in profile. She's yeah. never looking head on. It's always just to the side. She's thinking about something. There's no personality to it, and I really don't like the new covers at all. Yeah. Give me the old 70s cover. Even her in her school marm outfit. I yeah, it gives you some idea what the book is about, at least. Yeah. You know, I, I, I feel like I, I know, I mean, she's wearing a lot less makeup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, at least with the old ones, when you have the peacock feather, it ties in <laughs> with peacocks. So I guess technically. So that's um, the official book summary. What is your book summary? Um, honestly, the official one is pretty close to what actually happens in the book. Mm. But I would point out that what they do not say in that book summary is that we all know it's a, a romance novel from a certain era, and that there's going to be a bastard dude in it. He doesn't show up until, like, a third of the way through the book. Yeah. yeah. It, it takes, it's a long time coming for, for him to show up. A lot of it's just, like, a girl hanging out. <laughs> yeah, with an inappropriately older... <laughs> I was like, is this old guy the guy? Yeah, was I was afraid worrisome. maybe it was going to be really incestuous because uh, they didn't kind of introduce the characters um, who were relevant, and I was afraid they were all going to be related. <laughs> yeah. I feel like my summary of the book would be like, girl is awesome in England, goes to Australia, <laughs> and starts to suck. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, And also there's opals, which there's a lot of talk about opals in this book. Really, the real romantic lead of the book is an opal. And I was like, all right, I'm going to Google opals. And while opals are nice looking, people go opal insane in this book. They <laughs> yes. go opal crazy. And I was expecting to look at an opal and be like, yeah, I see it. But to me, I was like, oh, it's just like something you buy at Claire's. <laughs> so I don't know. That's kind of my opinion of the book is everybody being too excited about a cheap ass stone. I think that's a great uh, 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 point is that, yeah, the opal is really the hot dude of the story. Yeah. Because the hot dude of the story... 
Now, I admit, I can never actually picture these romance dudes because, like, what is a cruel mouth? <laughs> they always have a cruel mouth and, like, an aquiline nose. <laughs> and, and flashing eyes, right? Flashing so eyes. I can't so picture this guy, but eyes. I can tell you all about the green flash of the sunset. Oh, the green flash of the sunset <laughs> is the sexiest motherfucking opal that ever lived. And I really wanted to see this damn opal, which is the, the guy I didn't give a rat's ass yeah. about, but I want to get a look at this opal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they were very much onto this opal, so... The girl, again, I like the beginning of the book, I enjoyed because I felt like it had a sense of humor about itself. Yeah. It was kind of mocking those gothic era novels. <laughs> um, you know, the girl who is too interesting and too questioning for her own good. Yeah, it was a little Jane Eyre. It was like, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, I mean, I love Jane Eyre. But it, yeah, I really liked her in the beginning. She was super smart. Um, she like figures out like, oh, there's a mysterious grave on this property. That's interesting. I never yeah. noticed that before. Yeah, and then it was like, no, oh, nothing to see here, nothing to see here. <laughs> um, and then she meets this old man Ben, who she saves from certain wheelchair <laughs> drowning as he rolls down a hill. So you know, immediately you're like, all right, she's she's not a do nothing type of person. Right. She's, she's you know, and she has this horrible family, this kind of yeah. like delightfully horrible family. Yes. It's very Jane Austen, where, oh my God, we have been so diminished in circumstances, we have to move to our house with one servant. <laughs> and that poor servant, the mom, and the mom is very much the mom, Mrs. Bennett. Yeah. And that she just keeps talking about better days and, you know, complaining about her servants and stuff like that. So I really enjoyed that part. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoyed that and I enjoyed finding out there's a secret mom. Yeah. Which, always by like the a way, secret mom. I was about to bitch and I was like completely ready. I had this whole like monologue ready about how on earth um, it turns out that she's she's one of those families where she thought that she her mother is actually her grandmother. So they have a whole other daughter who is you know uh, never spoken of. How do they secret even have a child? Yeah, secret uh, kids. Now to I be fair, it. her other siblings are much older. They don't have a lot in common. So. Yeah. And I was going to say, how the hell could you actually hide an entire sibling? And then I remembered, oh, yeah, I didn't know my mother was a nun until I was 16. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, so family, I guess you can hide stuff. Family secrets do happen. And you know what she said? This is the most baller thing. When I, like, confronted her, I was like, so I found out you were a nun. And she said, I didn't think it was any of your business. <laughs> That is pretty baller. That's pretty great. Yeah. That is pretty baller. <laughs> so, I do. I, li- I love whenever I can be like, secret daughter, secret mom. Those are my favorite things in these kind of terrible thing books. But, again, the England part, really good. Because you have that. You have her hanging out with old Ben. <laughs> old Ben Stankleg. You kept thinking, and, like, where's the dude? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, Ben talks. The, 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 the dude is Ben's son. And he talks this guy up. I mean, I think that he thinks that Ben is way hotter than anybody else thinks. Oh that yeah, ben is. Dad, Dad <laughs> is Ben's number one like banging fan. He's like, yes. And the other part that I found a little disturbing is Ben had the hots for. We well, should start off our our leading lady Jess, whose middle name is Opal. No, her first name. Oh yes, first name. Yeah, because her family is like, no, we're gonna miss this stripper name. Yeah, yeah. So Opal here meets Ben, and Ben keeps talking about how hot. Opal's secret mom was, which, you know, (laughs) fine. And then Ben wanted to bang Opal's mom so bad that he's like, well, if I can't have her, my son's going to have Opal. (laughs) And fine. It gets her out of the shitty house, but also Hmm. we can kind of unpack that a little bit. And then he does some bullshit because, okay, so he's dying. And of mysterious, probably tertiary oh, syphilis, probably. He's, he's dying of sadness because he can't go back down into the opal mines. The opal, again, is really the hot piece of ass in this book. Everybody wants a piece of it. And if they can't have it, they're either going to go crazy or they're just going to die. And we should mention, by the way, that our spoiler policy is fuck you. <laughs> Uh, you had 30, 40, what? I mean, if you, years can't, if you can't have read a book from 1973, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. I mean, if you want to read it, great. If you don't want to read it, we're just going to tell you all about it. Um, but the, the thing is that there is a mystery that is unresolved, because obviously the mystery of Jess's dead mom, pretty well fucking resolved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so the mystery that's unresolved is that the reason why she was left by, uh, I don't remember his name and it doesn't really matter, is that this dude, this young guy who fell in love with this woman, stole the opal, the green flash of the sunset. 
stole it, and it was it's the best opal in the whole wide world, and everybody loves this opal, um, and he ran away uh, and abandoned her, and so she had the baby, and then she threw herself in evidently an extremely small and slow-moving creek. It was like a tiny creek. I mean, it, <laughs> like, they make this very clear. I mean, it was very <laughs> Sylvia Plath, but I mean, like, Sylvia Plath's <laughs> creek was like, meh, you know, way bigger. This lady's creek was like, it was half-ass Sylvia Plath, is yeah. what it was. Like, like it was, yeah, I, I felt a little bit bad about, um, I think, her, yeah, her name was also Jess. So, there's this missing opal, and which is interesting, right? And so, Jess comes to town because his dad's about to die. Um, so, he finally comes into the story, and... Um, Joss. Joss. I'm sorry, and, Joss. Oh, Joss. Yeah. yeah. Our romantic <laughs> leads are Joss and Jess. And I completely forgot about Joss's name until I just looked it up, because he's such a nothing person. But they call him the peacock throughout the book, and with complete seriousness, which is stupid. I mean, you cannot take this seriously. It's like, now I know why they call you, know, you the peacock. I kind of enjoy, in, in these books, like, the ones that were, where they have nicknames, and their nicknames are always, like, the beast. Or, the, okay. or Wolf Blast. No, or, I, will, I will tell you that we're going to read um, Shadow of the Lynx eventually because I have some embarrassing shit about that book to tell you about middle school Sarah. <laughs> but Lynx yeah. is the name of you the know, guy in like, that book. The Jaguar. Yeah. The, but, you know, the Peacock. Is I mean, I love a Peacock. They're beautiful, but they're also kind of useless. <laughs> like... All they do is they walk around and they're decorative. And then hilariously, okay, Ben's um, house in Australia is peacock themed the way that your hilarious drunk ass aunt's house is is cheetah themed. I mean, yeah. it is everything, everywhere. Everything is peacock themed. Yeah, it's like hand towels and I mean, <laughs> it's it's a little it's a little much. But you so, can tell, and it's a book. You can I mean, yeah. you can tell through a book that somebody has over decorated in peacocks. That yeah, this is probably <laughs> so. Just the peacock. Shows up, is pretty polite to this girl. Yeah, who just hates him because he's like, "Hey, you're 19. What do you know about life?" Right, and he's right. Of course, he's like 30 something, so he yeah. has no business with her anyway. But so this bullshit. Um, Ben's like, "Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave y'all all my money and my opal mine and all this shit and the house that your mama has wanted to get back in ever since you had to sell it." But. Canada's. There's well, you a got to get married to the peacock. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, they <laughs> so have, it's a sham marriage, which is, I know, like, very popular in it, romances. And this is what's upsetting to me, because in these books, and my grandmother, Mildred Habarger, <laughs> was the queen, because she had so many of those trashy Harlequin, white cover with trash on the front books. <laughs> I, you know, I was well-versed in tropes before I was 13. I love a trope. And fake marriage, marriage of convenience, mm. top top yes. four of my tropes. Top four. So I was like, yes, a marriage of convenience. But these two, <laughs> these two are so boring. <laughs> so boring. Like, they take, I was, I, was, I was so disappointed. I was like, finally, things are happening because the first 200 pages of this book are just, just, just kind of snooping around and people telling her to stop snooping around. And then she meets the peacock, marriage of convenience. Here we go. And they're going to Australia. So that should be fun, right? Right. I mean, I don't know. I, I, Australia, to me, <laughs> is just a place where things want to kill you all the time. I, I want to go so bad, dude. Oh, you, you go. You go. Because, like, <laughs> I just, I can't with, Australia is a trash place. <laughs> it makes beautiful people, but it makes beautiful people because all of evolution has designed them to have to constantly not be killed by They're somebody. They're so nice, though. Like, you can go, by the way, you can go to, like, the, 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 the village at the end of Uzbekistan, and you can go to the bar in that village, and there's going to be an Australian guy there. And he's <laughs> always going to have a foster somehow. Yeah, yeah, and he's going to be super sweet, and he's going to be the nicest yeah. guy. Uh, they get around, Australian people do. Maybe it's because they don't like uh, Australia. Yeah, because something's trying to kill them all the time. I want to go so bad. All the time. So bad. I'm going to go. Crazy spiders. When I'm a podcasting millionaire, I'm going to go to Australia. That's the one thing I could have done more with in this book is Australian outback shit trying to kill them. (laughs) There's not a lot of that. There's, like, people. There's some of that. Yeah, there's There's people and some fires and stuff. But, yeah, no. So, anyway, yeah, they go to Australia. And, like, they they do a little bit too much detailing of the boat ride there, by the way. All the places they stop. And, I mean, it's like they're on a little honeymoon and it's nice. But the thing is, this dude is supposed to be such a bastard. But he's, like, super chill about it. He's like, okay, so you're 19 and hate my guts. And we both want this fucking opal mine. So, why don't um, we just be chill about this and we'll get separate staterooms and I will not bother you. Such a gentleman. 
such a gentleman. And all he does is just be a little bit brusque sometimes. I mean, that's like literally the worst thing he does. Yeah, Yeah. make some snarky comments. And I make snarky comments all the time to people I I like. I know, right? So they get there. And... (laughs) Oh, she got (laughs) mad at him. The, The basis of her calling him a bastard and hating his guts is because he tells her... In Australia, you've got to learn how to ride a horse really well. Mm-hmm. And you don't know how to ride a horse really well, so I'm going to teach you to ride a yeah. horse really I'm well. I'm going to give you a horse. Yeah. If a man gave me a horse... You son of a bitch. Like, I love my husband. If you if you give me a horse... Fuck yeah. you, yeah. Right, yeah. She's all mad at horseback riding lessons. Yeah, she's just... Uh, yeah, and I mean, the reason she's mad, she's mad for plot reasons. She's mad yeah. because she's supposed to be mad at this guy. And we, you never see very much of this guy, and I'm pretty sure it's just because if you saw more of their interactions, you'd really see that there's nothing wrong with this guy. No, he he's, he's a decent, decent dude. dude. So, anyway, so they get to Australia, and it turns out that she... Well, no, first, there's a, there's a little... She starts to be concerned because she realizes, and this does make a certain amount of sense, all right, so y'all were forced to get married. You had each have a half of an opal mine, which is producing, and this is a lot of money. And so if, um, if you were to die, he would obviously inherit it and have the whole opal mine. So, great. Fair enough, fair enough. Great. But that's a big jump. I mean, like, she has got a jump to conclusion, man. Yeah, I mean, really she, she really does it hard. Of course, she's big. 19. But, oh, and I forgot to tell you, we find out, right, as Ben dies, that the opal was never stolen. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's there all the time. So her dad, now granted, was going to steal it. And see, I wasn't sure. I thought there was going to be some business about that. Mm. I, I kept on waiting for the other shoe to drop, that somebody was lying or, or whatever. So her father... Um, it was not in the book at all, so it doesn't even matter, but he was gonna steal it, and, um, Ben's like, no, you get your shit and go. And yeah. he does, he goes to America. So, but, uh, the opal is still supposed to be at the Peacock, which is also the house. It's the dude and the house. Yeah. <laughs> so, they go there, and they're like, oh, we gonna get that Peacock, or so that, that, uh, that green flash of the sunset. The green flash at sunset is a whole <laughs> big thing that nobody ever really sees. No, I thought I that, I was sure I was calling it, because, of course, the green flash is also a natural phenomenon that sometimes you see when the sun is going down and prison conditions are perfect. And they look for it on the ship all the way there, and they don't see it. And I thought, oh, the last page of this book, they're gonna be married, and they're gonna see the green flash. No, nobody ever sees the fucking green flash. This book is full of Chekhov's guns that do not go off. Yeah. It's very true. I mean, I was waiting for that, too. I was like, oh, happiness. That's going to be their happiness. No. Because what also didn't happen is she wants to find out the mystery. You didn't silence your phone? I didn't silence my phone. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> We're new to podcasting, or I am. <laughs> she, so. um, she finds out. She wants to find out. She's like, I'm going to solve this mystery. And once the mystery of her mom is solved, like, she's, and then the green flash is not missing she she gives up and i thought she was gonna find out what really happened and clear her dad's name and that he was gonna come back because yeah, they're no. very careful about who was there at this party you I, know i thought that there was gonna be some more mystery shit and that like no he dies off screen in america <laughs> i do think and you know big ups on victoria holt for making a empire for herself you know pre danielle stealing it but i feel like at the end of this book she was like well shit i gotta wrap this up yeah is what I felt happened at the end of the book. I will say, I enjoyed the book more than I thought I was going to enjoy yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Like, I went into this kind of being one of those things where fun I was of like, it, yeah. <laughs> oh, the green, yeah. No, I, I did. I enjoyed it. It was written very smartly. And it is kind of impressive to think that this woman in the early 70s did this. Yeah, and she had an absolute empire. She was actually like, she had six different pen names. And yeah, she was, yeah, and she was a, so, a I mean, it, that, that part of it is great. And. But I do think the ending of it was a little bit lazy. Because Home Slice gets so stupid. Oh, Alright, so she thinks stupid. that the peacock is out to kill her. And it does turn into one of those idiot plots where people just have a goddamn conversation. So I understand why you wouldn't so say, hey, are you trying to kill me? But she starts to think that her dead mother Ooh. is inhabiting the peacock, the house, not the dude. <laughs> And she does dumb yeah. things, like she gets a note from this dude, uh, meet me in the abandoned mine, and she's like, dum da dum da dum Whatever you get them, meet me in the abandoned mine, you know, note. Never go. Yeah. Never, like, no. How is this hard? Never go when you get that note. Although it was a little more uh, interesting. I thought it was going to be that somebody's going to whack her over the head, but instead, no, she just almost died of poison, poison gas. gas. Poison gas. <laughs> um, Didn't take her canary. We're missing a lot of this. Like, there's, when they get to Australia, to this whatever happy town the town reminded me of porpoise bit from muriel's wedding but like 
turn of the century porpoise bit where everyone is it, where everyone is sort of miserable <laughs> and you know wearing fashion ten years behind the time. So they're in this opal mining town, Happy Valley or whatever it's called, and Jess, our 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 heroine, has fallen in love with the peacock. But doesn't want to tell the peacock that she has fallen in love with him. And she meets the peacock's friends. And he is obviously banging the wife of his friend. Yeah. Obviously. So, that's a whole element to it. There's a scavenger hunt. (laughs) And then there's a crazy housekeeper. Yeah, and it was like a Mrs. Danvers, and it was her all the time. It was the her the whole time. And it's like, but I thought there was going to be like one of these people in disguise was really going to be her dad. Yeah. Like, I th- and then like the, it could have been the, so much more interesting. Yeah, the accountant keeps popping up, and I'm like, yeah. hmm, that's interesting because he was also at the party mm-hmm. where the peacock was not actually stolen. Yeah, uh, so I keep calling it the peacock. They should have called the fucking opal the peacock. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the green flash at sunset. So we have the peacock who is a person <laughs> and and a house and a house, <laughs> and I think there is an opal. <laughs> Look, there's ben, a Harlequin opal. Ben's got about 25 the, opals that all have really elaborate names. <laughs> like, he doesn't just name them, like, Diane, Francis. They're all, like, the green flash at sunset. Something wicked this way comes. October sunsets are the best. <laughs> you know, and so I think there is one called the peacock. So I think the peacock is an opal, it's a man, and it's a house. So I'm not even sure if it's an opal. The Harbor Quinn is definitely an opal. Yeah. Because, oh, get this crap. There's some emotional manipulation shit where Joss is trying to make Jess jealous because he's fallen in love with her, too, because then nobody will say anything. So he gives this Harlequin opal. Oh, this is this is real high EQ on this dude. To the dude, the, the lady that everybody knows has been banging, hoping that it will make her jealous. Well, it does make her jealous. But it doesn't, like, I mean, I feel like a result. big tip ever. Like, this is just a good life tip. Bastard or no bastard, if you're trying to make your girl jealous, buying somebody else's girl a highly expensive piece of jewelry is dug it out of the ground, actually. It's about (laughs) the stupidest thing that you can do. Because she thinks they're going to murder her and run away. Yeah, and I do like that that's where she jumps. Mm -hmm. And I kind of appreciate that. I feel like, honestly, taking a step back, Jess is a little bit of this mixture of all these... Regency era heroines. She's kind of got like that's a very Catherine Moreland from Northanger Abbey thing, you know, because Catherine Moreland loves mysteries. She loves gothic novels, and when she goes to the Tilney House or um, when she goes to Northanger Abbey, you know, she she goes lurking around and finds the picture of the late mom and thinks that the father murdered her. <laughs> You know, so I, I kind of appreciate that there's these little subtle nods that Victoria Holt takes to these old characters that are very similar. But at the same time, you're just like, oh, this is exhausting. Where Jane Austen, <laughs> like, can put it, because she's Jane motherfucking Austen, yeah. where she can put it in this amazing context to where you're like, this is exactly what a 17-year-old would do. Yeah. When Victoria Holt does it, you're still exhausted with it. And, I mean, the girl is 19. Yeah. And but I mean it's not your dead fucking mom, all right? <laughs> and you should always suspect the help. <laughs> it's always the help. Come on, I'd murder you if I were your housekeeper too, just because oh you know. God, yeah. so there's, have, a, there's a little bit of Rebecca in there too. Which yeah, is always. If I have to live in a fun. shitty like backwoods opal mining town in Australia, I'm murdering every goddamn person. I mean, it's like a nice house, so the, yeah. the, they're like the local lords and ladies, mm-hmm. which is I love like the snobbishness that Victoria Holt brings to it. Like, oh yeah. well, because he essentially tried to like recreate the house that. He always wanted to live in, which he did buy when her grandfather right. like, went and lost it in the game. But it's all just a little bit tawdry, and she like a little bit, dude. It's decorated wall to wall fucking peacocks. Yeah, <laughs> just just bananas. So again, I guess at the the end of like a summation of it, I did enjoy the book. I did. I really did. I was a page turner. It was a page turner, and like I said, I went into this being a little bit of a snot and being a little snobby about it, but. Victoria Holt can get it. Yeah. And it was compelling, and there was a lot more, there was a lot more plot than I thought there was going to be, a lot less banging. <laughs> like, at, there were points, and we'll get to this when we do our questions and stuff, but there were points I was just like, oh my god, will you two just bang it out already? Just bang it out. And 
That does not happen in this book. <laughs> yeah. There's babies that appear. Yeah, babies. And no nobody fucks. Nobody fucks. Mm. And, like, that's the point of these books. Like. And I remember there'd be more banging in Victoria Hall books. Now, I mean, maybe it's, like, a continuum yeah. and I was reading later books or something. Or I was 12. And we'll talk about that later. Yeah. But, yeah. And the thing is, I get that she's afraid. Because she is in this precarious position. She's a woman alone. Right. If the house turns against her, she's, she's like, three days from Sydney. And, like, one of those days, like, the, the inn has burned down. So, yeah. she has good reason to be cautious. But, I mean, when... And this is, like, two people who are... This is just a dumb plot. This is not an organic way to behave. She starts to hear footsteps in the hallway and a hand on her door. Actually, it's Joss who really just wants to talk to her because he's fallen in love with her. And instead of knocking on the door of this 19-year-old who he knows is a little bit afraid of him fucking raping her. Yeah, he doesn't know. Now he tries the door and then he's like, ah, nah, nah. Yeah, toward the end, she's just falling downstairs. She gets drugged, but she (laughs) uses her mental acuity to, like, fight the drug. (laughs) Good for her. I did appreciate that. You know what I really like, though? She gets down there and she owns half an opal mine and she's like, okay, so how exactly does this opal mine operate? I'm going to sit down with the opal um, graders and... She's not do nothing. And that is, again, if you think about the, the context of of when this book was written, the early 70s, you have this female lead, this female young main character that for her entire life had been kind of pushed aside and forgotten and overlooked and just begrudged by her family. And then when she gets into this new family and this new opportunity, she seizes it and she really becomes involved in the business. And I think that's a great... It's interesting to see kind of her being... This product, not of her time in the book, which is, you know, the late 18, early 19, you know, late 1800s, early 20th century, but, like, being her a product of the, like, 60s and 70s, I and mean, be like, you know, sister's gonna do it for herself. So, this book was a lot more, in a way, feminist than I was expecting Yeah, it, to it really be. was. And nobody, like, di- nobody denied her to see at the table, either. Yeah. Now, granted, she was, like, she did not work her way up from the people in the Calico tents. Right, no, I but... would have been a little bit pissed off had she just, like, swanned right. into my life if I had been busting my ass mine and Opal's all this time. But, uh, yeah, so she gets this, um, this amazing gift, which, you know, it get, puts her in, like, the 1% of, yeah, you know, Victorian she, and classes. And she, she, she appreciates Yeah, them. she works with it. She's like, okay, awesome. Uh, yeah, how do you mine opals? And she actually gets in, I mean, not just, you never see her in the mines, but you do see her, not just in bookkeeping or whatever, but you see her, like, where they're polishing them, yeah. where they're selecting the stones. I mean, like, she she's finds a, the... Like, she finds a niche that she really enjoys and, like, learns so much about it. And it's interesting, especially, like, you take this book, like we said, from the early 70s. I think it's like 73. Mm-hmm. And you put it up against kind of the new romance fads that are mm-hmm. happening now. And Victoria Holt is much more progressive than the shit that's being published today. Mm-hmm. You know, the things that are being published today are all along the lines have been very, very, um, I guess, kind of, what was the word? Like, they've been based a lot off like this like the regress but like we're we're basing a lot of stuff off this like twilight fad Mm. you know 50 shades of gray was fan fiction that was based off of twilight and so this is this whole new movement of don't worry honey i'll take care of everything to a point that is absurd and if Mm. this motherfucker wasn't handsome as shit (laughs) it would be creepy (laughs) and he would be arrested So, it is nice to see, and it is an interesting juxtaposition of 1973, girl while she's an idiot, doing stuff for herself. I would much rather, I would much rather hang out with Jessica, or Opal Jessica (laughs) Clavingsham than I would Bella, whatever her name was. Swan? It's Bella Swan, isn't it? (laughs) Well, and I'm also concerned by, and I mean, the newer stuff, I think that people are addressing this, but like for a while there, a lot of YA that was supposed to be empowering Mm -hmm. for girls was really about girls who were strong females, but they were never really making their own decisions. Like, Katniss Everdeen, she just responds to stuff. Stuff happens to her. It's always, yeah, it is always a response. And like, divergent, like all those things, like these things happen to these women, and they kick asses, but they kick asses because they they don't really ever make a choice. There's a trend where it's either something catastrophic is happening to you, or you die. Mm -hmm. And that is the only reason that you're interesting enough to have a story. Right. And so, it is kind of, well... This girl has kind of the opposite, where something amazing happens to her. You know, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's uh, I don't know. It's an interesting, but you know, at the same time, while she's with this Joss guy, 
Joss is not informing every decision that she makes. No, not and at I all. And I appreciated that about Yeah, it. she chooses to be interested in the mind stuff. She had yeah. no reason. I mean, he would have been perfectly happy. I, he probably thought she's just going to manage the house. Yeah. Which, granted, is a full-time job for right, a large right. house like that. Absolutely. But I'm, I'm thinking about it in Rebecca, um, where she goes to manage the house, and everything is set against her. She doesn't know how to do it. Right. And Rebecca always did it better. And she has this, like, even the furniture. Like, Rebecca has this desk with these pigeonholes, and it's just... Uh, elaborate it's like she walks into Rebecca's bullet journal mm-hmm. she does not know what the yeah. code is you know whereas I um yeah Jess like she doesn't know how to do stuff so she asks people and I think <laughs> the other thing I liked about Jess is when she goes to the house there's the housekeeper who ends up being insane and trying to kill Jess but also the housekeeper's daughter and son who are terrified that Jess is going to get rid of them. And she's like, I'm not going to, I don't know what I'm doing. You guys say, yeah, you're doing yeah, a great of job. Course. So I liked that element of it too. She um, doesn't take, the, the second she gets money, she doesn't turn into yeah. a giant cunt. I would have liked to have seen, I think, again, also, like more, talking about this book more, I like it more. I would have liked <laughs> to have seen, I know, right? <laughs> Jess is 19, obviously, so she doesn't have, you know, she's 19. So she doesn't have a lot of the confidences in something that an adult woman would have. So when it's her versus unnamed neighbor's wife that I can't remember. Oh, I know. I can't remember her name. You know, that woman eats her alive. And I would have liked to have seen a little bit more about that happening because, like, how her feeling is about her being so young mm-hmm. and, like, reacting to that. I think it's I would have else. loved to have read her story because that would have been super fun. Yeah. She was, she was, she was really interesting. <laughs> But what was so frustrating is that Jess just falls in love with Joss because that's the kind of book it is. Yeah. And you never, you, you don't even see enough of the guy, frankly. Mm-hmm. He's not even in the book very much. No, he's not. It was the one, yeah. I feel like the one. They do things because they're supposed to because that's the kind of book it is. And I, I, that's what I didn't like about the book. I feel like, yeah, that is, Joss is the weakness in the book because it's just, again, there's a lot of, well, we did this, we did that. There's not a lot enough, there's not enough about him to fall in yeah. love with. Like, I can't even tell you why he was such a bastard. It was just like he was vaguely unpleasant to her for no, because the plot called on him yeah. to be so. Yeah. Sorry. I, and the thing is, and I guess we we'll, we can get into our questions yes. because that's the first one. All right. In these books, every single time, there's this absolute fucking douchebag, but he's super hot. And so you bastard, don't mind yeah, it. Bastard to bay ratio. Yes. And so, the thing is, you should have, like, a Mr. Rochester, okay? Yes. He's hella hot, so you forgive him. You being the reader. Yes. Now, you might not really approve of the, uh, the, yeah. the female main character forgiving so, him. The, yeah, the Rochester-Darcy <laughs> quotient. Yeah. The, you know, I mean, Darcy ended up not being a complete bastard. No, but... you only find out that, like, oh, he was just crippling insecurity, <laughs> yeah. you know? But, but you know, I, or, it, like, for, for you know... For Rochester our, was an asshole. Oh, Rochester was an asshole, but, like... <laughs> For me, I will always put it to my my love of Spike. Mm-hmm. Like, where does he rate Spike wise? Because Spike for me is the ultimate bastard. That I'm like, hands up, I'm going for every <laughs> yeah. single time. Because a true romance novel bastard had better be so damn hot I know. that you will forgive him any of his horrible and behavior. And like, have a swagger. It's the same with yeah. like the John Malkovich character in Dangerous Liaisons. Like, he's a son of a bitch. But I am here for it. He better have flashing eyes, all mm-hmm. right? Okay? So what is our bastard to bay ratio for this book? Oh, my gosh. It's just I've a fart noise. Him. It's just a fart noise, isn't it? Because <laughs> he's neither bastard nor bay. No, he's not He's not interesting. He's a peacock. And, it, like, they just keep talking about how he's got blue eyes. Like, yeah. yeah. I got blue eyes, so what? What you got? So uninteresting. So uninteresting, I found him. I, yeah. He ruined the whole book. I mean, yeah, and th- 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 that is the keystone of all yes. of these books. That is the absolute thing you must have, is a bastard who is hot. You gotta give me somebody that I'm gonna have only a little bit of compunction about, like, throwing away all of my sentiments about. Like, yeah. where I'm like, eh, yeah, you're kind of terrible. Pretty terrible, but God. I get it, right? Right, exactly. Right. So zero, on, zero. On question number one. Very disappointing. And these will be questions that we. This, these are going to be our common questions. <laughs> so you, you will see these again. All right, you number two. How racist is it? A little bit, tiny well, bit, just a little bit. But you know, that's the thing we found again in our extensive study and reading <laughs> our grandmother and mother's trash yep. novels is that 
for some reason, we don't like our trash to be contemporary. We want to we want to take it back. But we don't want to take it back usually just in England. We want to go to oh, one yeah. of the colonies. They're always going to be in a colony. So they do go to Australia, and they talk about the Aborigines. They talk, people. there are two lines, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's and it. And one of them, they do say abos, and I don't know if that's a really oh, yeah. bad term or not. I would, I'm sure well, that it's one you would not say. It's, you know what? It wasn't, it didn't make me feel... Icky reading. I've it, read so. far grosser. Things. Oh, so much far grosser. So if you are concerned about reading this one because they go to Australia and you're afraid that it's going to be hella racist, I would say it's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah However, of course, they do go to Australia and they only meet British Australia. So yeah. I mean, that, that's a, a, an issue. It's kind of obviously. like not an issue at all. So yeah, I mean, they they mention that there are household servants who go walk about sometimes, and that's pretty much right. all. They yeah, say. they go like the Aboriginal house house. <laughs> Servants are pretty good, but sometimes they just go walk about. So, well, considering that some of the White House servants actually try, try to, to murder, murder you, you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, I'm just saying that, you know, on my evaluations of um, staff this so, year. <laughs> we, our next question, because I feel like this is another common thing in these books, is that we all sort of hate the heroines a lot. So, would you mind if someone slapped the heroine? I would mind a lot in the first half. I would be furious if somebody slapped her in the first half. But when she starts thinking that her mama's ghost is playing the spinet, and then she oh, yeah. almost like has the stupidest death by falling down the <laughs> stairs because somebody left a box on them because of it, yeah, slap the shit out of that bitch. Yeah. I, I feel the same way. I think, again, it's almost like it's two different books. The first part of the book, she's very, very clever. She's got, she's got jokes for days. Mm-hmm. And they're good jokes. Yeah, she loves her jokes. She lo- she's, I mean, she's great. I guess and she's then, busy. She's, you know, she's running an open mind. Yeah, she goes to Australia and lets the sand, like, affect her brain <laughs> and gets stupid. So I wouldn't mind, like, a, you know, a couple quick slaps Just like the a, face, a little like, shake. Like, like, girlfriend, get yeah. it together. Yeah. So, same. Yeah, yeah, I think back half Australian hysterical Jess. Slap that bitch. <laughs> So, would my 12-year-old self have dog-eared any of the pages for salacious content? No. No. This book is... How do you get a baby without doing it? This book is so not dirty. It's so not (laughs) dirty. Like, it is the least dirty book. Like, I was, I kept waiting. I was like, all right, these two just need to bang it out. They just need to bang it out, and it's going to be, like, there's no banging. There's no banging. There the wasn't even any veiled. Like, like, no. I yeah. was expecting veiled bang. I, know, I, I mean, I did not think it was going to be, like, ball slapping, you know. But I thought that it would be, like, vague, like, a door closing. No. Uh, a fa- like a, one the of those worst thing is, like, he rattles the door handle. <laughs> That's, like, the biggest, like testament that he is sort of interested in her romantically. And then, I mean, she thinks that she, he's come to murder her. I so, honestly yeah. think that my 12-year-old self would have gotten to, like, page, like, 100 of this book and just thrown it in a way and discuss it. Like, there's like, no sex in this. I'm like, Mama, where's, like, the secretary's promise or something, you know? Like... <laughs> the Sydney Sheldon book? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, I mean, the thing is, these books that we... Weirdly, my mom didn't read a lot of romances, but there were a lot of these books around because I think that's the only books that anybody was publishing at the time. So I read a lot of like Victoria Holt. I read uh, oh the Sidney Sheldon books. I had a lot of dog years in those oh, because I- when you're twelve, you're trying to figure this stuff out. So we had the World Book Encyclopedia, yeah, and the S volume was not that enlightening. <laughs> so you oh, know. do you remember you used to have to like in the the encyclopedia the anatomy pages uh-huh. where it had like the, the overlays the vellum overlays. Like, that's what it was. Like, there was no internet to look up boobs or, you know, penises. So, a lot of your sex came from these books. Yeah, I had and the S volume for sex and the P volume for paintings. Because there's <laughs> classical art. And oh, that oh will my confuse God. you, by the way. My grandmother had, when she went to, like, when she went to France, she went to Paris and she came back with the Louvre um, painting guide. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that was, like, Playgirl for me. Because right. I was just like, Because there was nowhere to see a penis. Yeah. I, you know, and obviously I didn't have one. <laughs> right, exactly. So it was like, I was just looking at that like a pervert. And in I would read fa- In her fancy, like, front room. The, you know the room that you never were oh, yeah, allowed the, to go mm-hmm. in? I was always in there looking the, at this The book. living room, not the den. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I, um, I I used to read a ton of Stephen King books, and yeah. of course, because I was a giant freaking dork, when I came to a word I didn't know and I couldn't figure out the context clues, I would look it up in the dictionary. And let me tell you right now that both the words clitoris 
<laughs> orgasm and sodomy. Three words. If you look those up and you don't know what they mean already, the dictionary will do nothing yeah, for you. Yeah, it's not giving you, if there's, it doesn't help. It will not help you. Oh, so you've been drinking the red wine. Uh, tell I us. Have. It's And give me a little bit. It is, it's red wine. It's already <laughs> red wine. So it's red wine that is not terrible. No, actually, it's pretty good. It's pretty smooth. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sniff it. I'm going to look real... Yeah, it's red wine. Yeah. So, okay. So, so does this book have a what is the C, the CW <laughs> level of authenticity for this book? The LARP quotient. The LARP quotient. Do you feel that the author knew anything about the time period and locations in which it takes place? I really did feel like that Australia was pretty pretty authentic. I feel and, like both of them were pretty like. And that's not like the only book that she's written about Australia because we'll talk about Shadow of the Lynx. Okay, sorry, we had to stop because my beagle wanted to come upstairs. And, again, we're podcast newbies, and Skittles, the beagle, has no time for that shit. So, <laughs> we, we should give Skittles um, <laughs> the, uh, its, its own, her own? I don't even know. Yeah, her, uh, her, own, her own podcast. Yes, it would just be her baying and wanting snacks. So, that sounds... <laughs> It's pretty awesome. So, again, this book, I think, was pretty authentic. Mm -hmm. Like, there wasn't a lot of stuff where I was just like, oh, bullshit. Jesus. Yeah. Um, I couldn't see the zippers. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Know? So, our fifth question, how rapey is it? Because y'all know some of these books are rapey as hell. This book is not rapey. No, it's no, not no. rapey okay, at all. Okay, now, granted, the emotional bullshittery of having somebody force you into sham marriage, that... Yeah. That's kind of There's terrible. a lot of emotional, there's some emotional, you know, attacks. Because in addition to forcing you into a sham marriage, you also find out that even inadvertently, old friendly grandpa, Op Opal Love and Ben, <laughs> was sort of responsible for the death of your mom. Yeah. By causing a frame up with her, you know, lover. Sort of shitty. Yeah. Also, there's there's some shitty masculine behavior. Yeah, we can say that for sure. And I mean, seriously, you do not rattle somebody's doorknob who is terrified <laughs> that you're going to come in and rape murder, slash murder her. murder her. She's also afraid he's going to rape her. Yeah. And of course, he always made comments about like when they could and couldn't get double rooms. But yeah. I mean, I that's what he did fair. also from the from the jump. He was all like. We not doing anything. He was classy about it. And the thing yeah. is, thinking about it, he probably got some shit from other people. I mean, yeah. you know, you get two hotel rooms for you and your newlywed bride. Yeah. They're not going to, like, laugh at her. They're going to laugh, laugh at, at you. you. Yeah. Yeah. you know. So, not rape at all. You'll be comfortable no. with the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is nothing. I mean, the only gross thing about it is you can't figure out why on earth these people fell in love in the first place. And there's a huge age difference, yeah. which is very common. Because I this think sort of he's thing. about 32. In yeah, that. and she is like 19. 19. And she's not 19 when the book starts. Okay. So our last question to kind of wrap it up is how bad are you judging grandma for having this book? Nah. No. Grandma can have this one. You know what? My grandma, I would have been like, <laughs> meh. She had way trashier, way trashier. So. Honestly, this book, if it didn't have the romance in it, would be, like, legit fiction. Yeah. Yeah, if I the agree. peacock never appeared, if she just yeah. inherited an opal mine out of the blue, yeah, I mean, I Yeah, I would, exactly. Yeah. So, this is respectable. I think overall, overall, I would recommend it, because she is an interesting character. He sucks, but... <laughs> he's not in it much. <laughs> he's not, yeah, he's not in it enough to, like, really have, you know any kind of say so it is i mean i'm glad i read it i feel like it was interesting and i was pleasantly surprised with the book i actually almost picked up another victoria holt book when i finished this because i still had a yeah. little stack on my uh, on my desk when we were when we were looking at it and um yeah i enjoyed it frankly i just um i, I was frustrated by it because a i wanted more doing it and oh b like oh uh, come on he's neither a dick nor a hottie, so... No, you gotta be one or the other. Like, I also enjoy, the, you know, the converse, like, so sweet, but a little passive hottie. <laughs> but also, if you're gonna be, which, you know, that's more of a two thousand. The Ashley deal. Wilkes, is that... <laughs> yeah, oh, no. But, like, <laughs> if you're gonna, if you're gonna be a son of a bitch, you, you better be bringing it looks wise. And he was not... Or, if you're not bringing it looks wise... Mr. Rochester, mm -hmm. you better be such a son of a bitch that it's hot. Yeah, you gotta have the personality. Yeah, like, yeah. and there, there's none of that. There's, he's just sort of a guy. Because, I, I mean, like look at, okay, look at that exact example. So, Jane Eyre is written, 
a long time before this book is right. written. There can't be no doing it in Jane Eyre, but somehow there's more sexual tension. in Yes, that book a than ton there is more. And I mean, like you know, I'm sure that I know, like I, they they describe um, Rochester as like you know heavy browed, and which I don't even know what that means, really. Quite frankly, none of these make any sense. No, but. Yeah, he was still a thousand percent hotter. Way hotter. In a book that had to be much more oblique, even though it was yeah. all about sex. Oh my god, that was this. That <laughs> it's funny to think about these books, these you know Regency era, real Gothic era books. Yes, yeah. true Regency romances are the horniest things that you have ever read, <laughs> and you didn't really get it when you were younger. It was just like oh muslin, and you know, <laughs> and now you look at it and you're like shit. This is hot. You yeah, know? Lizzie Bennett and and uh, oh <laughs> Mr. Darcy want to bang so, so much. Bad. So you want to just bang it out? Yeah. So oh, nowhere near like Wentworth and I forget her name in Persuasion, and they're just like taking turns throughout the room and, and writing letters and to each Elliot. other. And, and Elliot, Elliot yeah. and um, Captain Wentworth probably the most banging it out. Couple. Like they probably the closest they ever get physically is she's literally walking in circles in a fucking parlor and he's writing really yeah. hard a letter and yeah it's like, you know what he's doing with that yeah letter, your, your, your <laughs> loins yeah. are stirred and whereas yeah. victoria holt had the ability yeah had the freedom to talk much more frankly although i mean obviously not as frankly as like later books but still and you know i'm not feeling it all right i'm not feeling my it all. loins are not stirred no so speaking of stirring of loins um our next book we're going to, like, turn the tables entirely. Uh, you know, of course, Victoria Holt wrote these sort of gothic romances. And then Kathleen Woodvice comes around, and she burns the whole house <laughs> down. And we're reading The Flame and the Flower, the first bodice ripper. Yeah, so. Yeah, please, it's going to be rapey as shit, y'all. Please read along with us. Yeah, and if you want to, because if you don't read along with us, we're going to spoil the whole thing. Guess what? It. He's an asshole. They get married. There I haven't read it, but I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Lots yeah. of sex and probably petticoats. <laughs> so thank you for joining us. And <laughs> hopefully as we do this, we will get better. <laughs>